Hello and welcome to another episode of Excel Statistics. Uh, today we are going to be talking about time series forecasting. Uh, we just finished up with a couple of videos on regression analysis, which is often used in order to create a forecast or prediction of uh, one value based upon their values. Um, but often we are expected to make a prediction about the future, looking mainly at just uh, time. So we're going to look at several different methods to do that and learn how to compare those against each other. Here you see our data. We have here the U.S. population from the year 1990 to 2010. And so our first method we're going to look at is called um, moving average. And with moving average, uh, it's a fairly straightforward method. We are going to, in order to create a forecast for 1992, we're going to take an average of 1990-91. This would be called a two-period moving average. If we wanted, we could complete a three, four, five, or even six-period moving average. Um, that's often going to depend on the type of seasonality you'll have um, in the data you're forecasting. If it's a very quarterly set of data, uh, we might uh, look at just uh, three or four data points at a time. Uh, so here we're just going to look at two. We're going to go to our data analysis tool pack. We're Select our option average. I'm going to select my input range here. I'm going to select my data. I have labels in my first row. My interval is two because I'm doing a two period. And then for my output range, I'm going to move down one period from the very top of my data range. And I'm going to try to start my data right there. That comes out. You see, I get this error message in the first one or in the 1991, uh, because I'm doing two period, I would need data from 89 and 90 to get an average for our forecast for 91. Since I don't have that, I'm not able to get that. Also see it uh, comes up with a prediction for 11, uh, which I'm going to delete for now. It kind of gets in the way here. Uh, but you can see here then, as I look at my 92, it is in fact, I've got the four average of B2 and B3, which is our 1991 um, population. And so that formula continues down. Please and check it. Here it's right in front of it. There's the average we used. Uh, but now we want to see exactly how good our forecast was. In order to do that, we want to measure the deviation, how far off we were. Uh, but one of the things we want to do is to avoid canceling out a positive and a negative uh, deviation, uh, we want to take the absolute value of that. So I'm going to put here absolute deviation. And I'm going to start with a simple form of ABS, uh, which will return the absolute value of a number. With, and I will just take my moving average forecast. And it's my actual population. You get that formula. So I can see there I was off by 4.2 million. 1992. If I highlight this data again, I grab this very bottom right corner, I double click on that and copy my formula to the bottom. So I can see uh, for each one of my values here what my deviation was for each year. I can see I was way off in the year 2000. Um, and yeah, let's see how that ended up. And if I come all the way down here, I'm going to calculate what I call a MAD or mean absolute deviation. Going back to my home menu, select under my auto sum, my average, and you see it highlights the list of data uh, for our absolute deviations. It'll take an average of that, and I would see that I'm off by 4.5 million per year on average. Now, in and of itself, this could tell you, sure, a percentage of how far you off you are, but what we don't know is whether that's a good percentage or a bad percentage, or a good amount or a bad amount. We really need other forecasting methods to compare it to to see if that's the value we would want to go with. Uh, so we could continue on and do some more moving averages. We could try three or four periods, see if we get any better numbers. But let's move on and try a, uh, another um, forecasting method altogether. The next one we're going to try is called exponential smoothing. Um, here with exponential smoothing, we are going to be taking um, our prior period forecast actually and we're going to compare that to uh, the prior period actual and we're going to 
smooth out the differences uh, we have between those. So we're going to take a portion of the difference and apply it to last period's forecast in order to get the next period's forecast. Sounds more complicated than it really is. Uh, but again, we can go to our data analysis tool pack. We have one for exponential smoothing. My input range is my population values. My damping factor, this is the percent of the deviation that I want to include in my next period forecast. Let's start here, we'll just say 0 0.5. Uh, it should be a value between 0 and 1. Uh, I did include the labels in the data I selected. And then for my output range here, I'm actually going to select the top row. Uh, that's the uh, one difference between these two is kind of where you have to select that starting row. So I'll go ahead and do this. And I'm going to do some formatting here real quick so I can see my numbers a little better. Here for exponential smoothing, uh, we do need our prior period forecast in order to, and our prior period actual in order to create a forecast. So I'm not able to do that on my very first row, my name. Uh, for my second row, 1991, um, I still don't have a prior period forecast, but I have an actual. So we will use the actual as our forecast for period two. And now we get to period three. And you see essentially what it does uh, by the time the math breaks out is we're going to take our damping factor. We're going to use half of our actual from last period and half of our forecast from last period and kind of combine those together, blend them or smooth them out. And so that's how we continue on. And so next we're going to calculate our deviation, just like we did with our other. We'll do ABS of our forecast minus our actual. Again, you can do the actual minus the forecast in this case. Uh, we won't see any differences. Copy that formula down, and then do my MAD again at the very bottom. We can see there for our exponential smoothing, we are at 5.7 or 5.8 million uh, deviation on average. Uh, so if I were to select between these two methods of forecasting, I would pick the moving average as I have less deviation on average uh, from year over year. So we're going to do one more uh, method here, and that will be our regression. space for absolute deviation there as well. Uh, in order to do this regression, uh, as we looked at before, we always used an x value to go with our y. In this case, we're not going to really use an x. We're going to call it t for time. And so we're going to use our actual just value for a year as our x variable in this case. We'll start with our data now tool pack. Regression. Use my y range, my population is the value we are trying to predict. My x, our year, which is the value we want to use to make our prediction. Select my labels, my output range, off here to the side so it's out of the way. Okay. And like we saw before, uh, we've got a very high multiple r here and r squared 0.99 which is a very good sign. We've got our coefficients, uh, the intercept of minus 6 uh, times e to the or 10 to the ninth power is our intercept. And then for every year, it looks like we're going to gain about uh, 3 million uh, people in the population. So what we want to do is start off with our regression equation, go up here to 1990, and we're going to put in uh, the equation for a line, our y equals mx plus b. So we got y equals, we're going to have m, which was our slope of our line, so that's our year coefficient. And I'm going to use my F4 key to get my dollar signs in there so that this value stays as I copy my formula down. So that's my m. I'm going to multiply that times my x, in this case our t value, our time. And then I'm going to finally add to that my intercept, or my b value. And again, I'll use F4 uh, to get these dollar signs on there to lock that back in place for me to copy the formula. If I get my forecast for 1990, I can drag that down here, get down to the bottom. 
Uh, so finally here on this one, we will again do our absolute deviation, ABS, forecast, minus our actual. Copy that down. And finally complete our mad value for this. You see there that our regression is only off by an average of 1.3 million uh, per year. So now we can take a look at our three different forecasting methods. See that out of those three, our regression has the smallest average error year over year. And so that's probably the forecast method we would choose to go with. Uh, we could go back to our exponential smoothing and to our moving average. We could try different moving averages. We could try different damping factors on the exponential smoothing to try to see if we can make those any better. Um, or we could just continue on with what we've got. Uh, although, if you're doing this for actual work, I would suggest you probably go back and uh, try to make the others as best as you can uh, before you move forward. Uh, one other side note I will add here is that uh, if you do happen to have um, Excel 2016 available, uh, there is a handy dandy little forecasting tool built in now. Again, over here on our data ribbon, we have there's forecast, there's a forecast sheet. Here it grabs this. Use historical data to create a visual forecast worksheet. I can tell it to forecast in. I'm going to go ahead and stop at 2000. And I'm going to create that. And what you notice this does here, it actually gives me this nice little graph. I will try to move out of the way. Uh, along with, so you see our actuals, there's a blue line coming in here, and then orange is our forecast. We've got these thinner orange lines, which gives us an upper lower confidence uh, bounds. Here, so it creates our data table, uh, which adapts to 10. Our forecast section here starts off at our 2010 actuals, and then we get our forecast value, and then we have upper and uh, or lower and upper bounds on that to create our chart. And there's actually quite a bit of math that goes into this, and there's a lot more options here if you need to deal with seasonality of things. Uh, and so, yeah, just a lot more options and very quick and easy to put together. So I would highly recommend that if you do have access to that as well. Otherwise, I hope you uh, found this video useful on forecasting, and we will see you in another video.